Welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. My name is Chris Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have our guest on the show today. She is currently coming through Alberta with stops in Red Deer, Lethbridge, and then here in Calgary on August 11th. And we're going to be talking about those upcoming shows here in a few minutes. But I want to introduce that our guest, and that is Biff Naked. Biff, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about your music, but also your stops here in Alberta. Oh my gosh, I am so honored to be on your show. And I'm excited to be coming to Alberta, of course, as always. So I, I, I've always asked my musical guests who ever come on the same question, and you're no exception. What does music mean to Biff Naked? Everything. Absolutely everything. Everything, everything. I love music. I listen to music from the minute I get up to the minute I go to bed. Uh, the fact that I can do music as a job is just uh, still a pinch me moment for me. Was music always in your life? Was it always something that you grew up on? Because I know when I was a, a boy in Ontario, like music was that thing that I gravitated towards because it, it whether I'm happy, sad, uh, perplexed, there was always a song that made me happy. Was that like you? Was music always a part of your life? Oh, definitely. I mean, my parents didn't really let us uh, get a record player until we were probably 12 years old. Um, but we listened to their stuff. Like they listened to a lot of Nat King Cole, for example. And to this day, I, you know, I'm such a huge fan of jazz and I credit them completely. Um, my sisters and I were in ballet. So we like learned early that we loved classical music. So, I mean, these things kind of permeated my childhood and then it all went to shit when I discovered Judas Priest in the eighth grade, you know, my poor parent and my sister, uh, I think she had the Motley Crue uh, shout at the devil record. And I mean, then it was all over. It was all over. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. You have made an impact on Canadian music. Looking back on your career, and I know that's always something weird to say to a, a, a musician like yourself who's still creating music and still putting out music, great music, which we're going to be talking about your newest song here in a few minutes. But does it does it give you a, a pause and reflect to look back on your career and say, I, I've, I, I've, I'm that person that kids my age, when I was looking up at Judas Priest, is now looking up to and saying, I, I found the person who I can identify with. Oh, you know what? I, I think that it still goes back to my first tour with Rhymes with Orange uh, in like I, 94, when I was performing a song for my first record called Tell On You. And uh, I used to perform an acapella before the show even started. And it was, I always say it was like, if anyone was going to throw things at me, like beer bottles, cigarettes, whatever it was, that was when they could do it. And I just stood there like it was almost like not self-sabotaging or self-deprecation, but it was uh, it was like the hardest thing for me to do. And I figure if I get that out of the way, the rest of the show is easy. And every single time I did that, there would be a girl that would come up to me after the show and say that really impacted me or I can relate to this song or whatever it was. So from the beginning, from the very beginning, um, I just felt like no matter how um, uh, self-conscious I ever feel, I always kind of felt I owed it to these girls to, to sing these songs of woe or triumph or whatever it was. I, I felt like I owed it to everybody. How does a person like yourself stay grounded in that situation? Because whenever someone comes up to me and says, hey, I listened to your podcast, my ego just goes massive, right? It, it's one of those like, oh God, someone's actually listening to me. But for you, like I said, who's released numerous records, you've had uh, great music come out. People know it across this country. How do you keep grounded in a situation like that? Because ego gets to celebrity. And it seems like just in their first few minutes of conversation here, you are such a grounded person. It's refreshing to see someone like yourself who is grounded. Um, 
I could be a dishwasher tomorrow. And I always think that, you know, I think, okay, I dropped out of university in my first year and this is all I've ever done. So technically I have no training. You know, I have a couple of honorary doctorates uh, of which I'm very proud because it made my dad proud and my mom proud. Uh, but the truth is they probably can't get me a job. So actually, I'm actually a, probably a dishwasher, you know, by, by trade. That's what my most training is in because I do all the cooking for my family and I do all the dishes. Of course I do. Um, so I, I think that, you know, part of being um, part of humility just in life in general is being able and willing to do all the jobs and do them all with joy. So I just, you know, I always am very conscious of the fact that it could all end tomorrow and I might not be able to, you know, sing anymore. And what would I do? Well, I'll tell you, I do washing dishes in a hurry. The reason I asked that question is because Canada and the world has seen a global pandemic and artists like yourself who are more established were able to get through the last three years quite easily because you had the, you had the fan base, but some artists were struggling to get by because they were just up and coming. Looking back on the last three years, how bad, or I shouldn't say how bad, but how did that impact you as an artist? Because there are people out there who are struggling and people who are musicians who are trying to make a living out of what they're doing, but you had that career. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but how was it for you for the last three years? Because you still put out music. You had uh, two songs released each year, but how was it for you during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic or whatever you want to call it? Well, I mean, it was like anybody else, you know, uh, for us uh, musicians, we only get paid really to put butts in seats. Mm -hmm. So even if we have a large fan base, it's not like they purchase albums. It's not like there is a format anymore where they, I mean, you know, in, in a general broad brush sense, you know, it's, it's just not a revenue source that would ever be enough for any artist. Maybe it's okay for J-Lo or, or whatever, or the Arkells or whatever you want to call it. But um, I think for the rest of us, and I include myself in that, um, we get paid when we're doing shows. You know, that is our bread and butter. And uh, yeah, with the, the onset of the global pandemic, there were no shows to play or shows got canceled or they got booked and then rescheduled. And uh, it was very, very hard. Um, you know, like a lot of families, you know, I had to basically dip into my savings and, um, that's what every, that's what everybody did, you know, really and truly, it's not even about pivoting. It's about paying the grocery yeah. bill more than anything else. And I think that everyone was in the same boat for sure. Um, what it did do was exacerbated problems that were there and it just made everything worse. So if someone was uh, living in poverty already, the pandemic just amplified that. If someone was in, you know, a, a bad job, well, it became worse or they didn't, you know, or they didn't stay at their job or couldn't. I mean, there are so many things that, you know, like any crisis, whether it's a health crisis or whether it's a, uh, a global pandemic, <laughs> public health crisis, or, I mean, it just really, it shows you what a real, real reality the big picture and you know you have to find it in yourself to keep going and it's very very it's been very hard for people um you know i always feel lucky if i can do two things pay the rent and feed the dogs and that's all i've ever really wanted to be able to do uh so i knock on wood but we're still we're all still standing somehow <laughs> We are, and we are going to be talking about your upcoming part, uh, to, uh, stops in, uh, like I said, Red Deer, Lethbridge, and Calgary here in a few minutes. But I want to talk about uh, something that you've put out on July 1st of this year, and that is your newest song, Roller Dome. Now, I have listened to this song over and over again. I'm pretty sure my husband is yelling at me every single time I play it because he just hates the fact that I play it everything at full volume and on repeat for a good, like, hour. Um Tell me the story behind Roller Dome. How did this song come about? Well, usually what always happens is Doug will write a riff and I'll basically sing along to it and come up with some words. 
And that's a never any different. And with, with this song, really, it just, you know, it was just such a happy song. It was like, it was kind of happy and sassy. And uh, I don't know, it just reminded me of the roller rink. And, you know, when I was roller skating, I was 13 and falling in love with, you know, anyone who even talked to me. Um, which never changed. I'm a pattern repeater, by the way. Uh, but I think that roller skating was a great theme for the song because it really, uh, it really was a good way to showcase musically uh, those, you know, those feelings of like young, young love and uh, and the roller rink. It was like, you know, the song. I always, I said to him, it, it just sounds like you know bubble gum. It sounds like bubble gum and pink pom-poms on your roller skates kind of thing and that's really what we wanted to convey and I think that we did it it's a it's one of my favorite songs on the new record so there is a new record that is going to be coming because that was my next uh, ultimately my next follow-up question before I get back to it but you've released Jim you've re- broken to my car and you've released Roller Dome three songs in the last three years is this leading up to a new album here can we expect something in 2022 or 2023 I hope so. We had a new record ready called Champion, and it was ready in 2020 when we were going to release it. Roller Dome was always supposed to be the third single. Broken to Your Car was number two, and the first single was always going to be Jim. Um, but the problem was we released Jim on Valentine's Day of 2020. And again, you know, Broken to Your Car would have been summer, and then Roller Dome would have been in the fall with the record all at once kind of thing. And the pandemic started to take hold. And then there was like a real um, problem that really started happening in, in, I guess, uh, in every city uh, across North America. And it was like a a racial uprising, like a reckoning. Um, And it just, for me personally, I just felt that it was more important uh, to focus on social justice and how I can be, uh, you know, contribute basically to the cause rather than, you know, toot my own horn and put a record out. I was like, my record does not matter this year at all. And, uh, and so we waited and thought we would really sit in 2021. But of course, you know, the pandemic was continuing and um, even worse. And it was just like, okay, let's keep waiting. And we tinkered with it a lot uh, at that point because now we had the time. And, uh, and so there's going to be like, I don't know how many songs, but it's going to be a triple record by the time it's released, hopefully this year. So it brings me to the question. So Champion is the uh, the, the album's name that Roller Dome is going to be on. Is it st- is it still Champion or is it going to be changed yes, to something? It is. <laughs> okay. No um, way. It's always going to be Champion because the fact that I'm even, you know, I didn't want to make a studio album for uh, almost nine years. And the fact that we were making one very earnestly, um, Really, it was the only word. I love power words. That's why there was purge. That's why the promise was the, another, you know, there's always super beautiful moss. There's always a name that like for me really resonates. And uh, champion is still uh, what this record is called. So what, what is it about the word champion that speaks to you? Because uh, you have overcome some struggles yourself with uh, cancer earlier uh, in t- uh, 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. But what is it about the word champion that spoke to you that made this? Is there a song on the album that is going to be called champion? Or is it something that's a larger meaning to it? Oh, definitely. And as you know, as everybody knows, I mean, you know, when you uh, when you have cancer, basically your whole family does too. Your partner, your parents, your kids, you know, the whole family goes through it. And to emerge out of the other side, uh, which takes years, you know, it really takes years. I mean, even for me from diagnosis, I mean, it was, you know, it was at least four years treatment and then the ongoing stuff after that. I mean, you feel like a champion every milestone that you hit. Um, and I, you know, feel like a champion just emotionally, uh, just in my own personal and private life. I feel like a champion uh, for ever getting a book out <laughs> and, uh, and definitely, definitely for surviving uh, the challenges that cancer held for me. I wasn't going to say this, but it seems it seems like we're good friends now. And I feel like I can say this, but um, 
during chemotherapy and people on my show know that I've struggled with cancer for the last three years. They've seen my hair loss. They've seen my weight loss and they've seen everything go through all that. Um, I can tell you music has affected me more than most people would imagine because when you're sitting in that chair, getting needles poked into you, when you're sitting in the radiation machine, getting radiation shot into your brain, you have music by, by your side. And I, I know it has nothing to do with cancer, but there are songs in your, in your library that have helped me through the last three years. And when we arranged this interview. I was, I was so happy to be able to do this because um, I, I, I want to say thank you. I and I, I, now I want to say you've made my entire, <laughs> you made my year because I'm so happy to hear that because I totally know what you're talking about, 100. percent And, and I, 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 I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and. It, to probably to the detriment of my husband, because every time we have to drive <laughs> to the cancer center here in Calgary, he always has to listen to the same five songs on repeat. <laughs> but um, thank you for putting out music that speaks so well. And when I heard Roller a Dome for the very first time, I knew that it was going to be a new addition to the uh, new treatment plan. Oh. So it, it is a toe tapper and I highly recommend if you haven't already, to my listeners, to my viewers, go check it out. Uh, oh. It's in Spotify. Uh, it is highly recommended because it is such a such a moment piece, and it spoke nice. to me in a way. And I was like, "This is what I need for 2022. This is the summer song for me because now I can play it on loop in my head, and so I'm happy. so happy." Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. That's exactly, that song for me is the same way. It's like, it made me so emotional. A, thank you for sharing. B, you know, please understand. I totally am sending you a virtual hug right now. I could hug you through this. If I can make it out to the August 11th (laughs) show, which we're going to be talking for a few seconds, I will be there to get that (laughs) virtual hug as well. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I will be there with masks and gloves, anything you need to keep you healthy and safe from any germs. Uh, Uh, But Roller Roller Dome did give me the same feeling that I had uh, the first time I heard the mix for Spaceman. You know, the, the, it's just something that there's something about the song that just is a yearning in a way. It's just this weird yearning. And there are other songs on Champion that are um, highly emotional, but none of them have the same kind of um, unintentional joyfulness in a way. I don't know if that makes any sense because, it, you know, it's just it's kind of silly and, you know, talking about love's baby soft perfume and and being in my underwear, you know, it's like silly, but at the same time, it's just like, I'm just, you made me, that just just made my whole year because then I just think, you know what, that song's for you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Promised myself I wasn't going to cry during this interview. I always cry. I, I always I, cry during interviews. I cry a lot during interviews these days <laughs> because my emotions are just completely <laughs> whacked. So, yes, um, of course. <laughs> I want to talk about your tour. Uh, you're coming through Alberta. Well, first you're starting Kelowna. You're going to be in, you've already been to Kelowna by the time this airs. You're stopping in Red Deer tonight on August 9th at the Bose Bar and Stage. And then on August yes. 10th, you're in Lethbridge at the Owl Lounge. And then on August 11th, you're in uh, at the Rec Room in Calgary. And then August 12th, you're in Regina. And then back to Winnipeg uh, on August 13th. Um, are you looking forward to so getting exciting. it through your Western tour here? Like, are you excited oh, to get yeah. back on the road? Very much so. And a lot of these places, we did a tour um, with Buck Cherry last fall, and that had been postponed like three times, you know? So for us, it was a miracle that it even happened. We couldn't even believe they still wanted to come to Canada. We were like, oh, we're so happy. Uh, so it's nice to, to come back. Alberta has always been uh, a place that held my heart. It was one of the first places I ever played on my very first tour in 1990. And, uh, you know, it remains a very special special place for sure so i'm just uh and of course winnipeg i mean you know that's where my my mom and sisters are and stuff and regina my dad lived there for so long and i'm connected to the prairies in so many deep ways 
So what can uh, what can people expect to hear at your shows here? Is it some of the new stuff, some of the old stuff, a mix of both? What do, what do we expect them to hear? That's exactly right. I mean, I can't, there, it's not possible uh, at all for me to do a show without playing I Love Myself today. I just can't. And, and same with Lucky. And, you know, uh, with songs like Lucky, I always dedicate, I always dedicate Lucky to all the nurses uh, because all, all of the chemo nurses, uh, they saved me, you know, they, most of the nurses working in oncology and, and in the chemo ward, they, they choose that. They want to be there uh, because there's just a different, there's a different, you know, brain set. And I just uh, had such deep appreciation for all they did for me and, and for other people um, that I did. I still dedicate every, every single time I play lucky to all the nurses and um yeah, the shows are special. Doing the songs are always special. And uh, so I look forward to I look forward to seeing everyone. And we here in Calgary look forward to seeing you as well out here. Um, just a reminder to my uh, listeners and my viewers, I don't know the exact details on the Red Deer Lethbridge show, but the August 11th, that's Thursday, August 11th at the Rec Room, doors open at 7.30, show starts at 8. Uh, before uh, Biff goes on, they will have uh, Messiah and the Spanx and Corey, the Corey Hotline will be performing before that, uh, Biff. So I uh, highly recommend, uh, tickets are $25. Please get a ticket because... Um, it's once in a lifetime opportunity to go out and see Biff live. And I, if I, I if I could make it there and I can get my husband's a okay to drive me there, we will be there. And I, maybe, maybe I'll, because I, uh, this is a little personal plug here, but maybe I'll sneak my Yorkie Terrier pup, a teacup pup, pup, all six of them in our little bag and we'll drive over. Oh my gosh. You have to even just at sound check. We'll talk. Let's do it. I highly recommend it. Um, before we go, I, I have one last question for you. We've talked about the next album. We've talked about your upcoming tour, but what's next? What does the future hold for Biff Naked? Well, you know, I can't say enough good things about um, my manager and how uh, he has been uh, just so supportive uh, for the last 30, almost 30 years. He's been my manager since 1992. Yeah, that's 30 years. And um there's a documentary uh, called Biff Naked, One of a Kind that we're currently filming. And yeah, I look forward to what that is going to do. Scorgy Productions uh, out of Edmonton and Electric Panda um, are at the helm. We've signed on with Super Channel and Jennifer Abbott is going to direct it. And a lot of people know her from the corporation. Um, so I don't know what to expect. I'm absolutely blown away that they even want to make a documentary about me. Uh, it's probably so, about so, my adoption story and my cancer story and stuff like that. It's probably about India, a little bit of India in there, my birth mom and stuff like that. So I think it'll be a, uh, multifaceted, uh, version of all the stories. So I, I'm glad you brought that up because I want you to shamelessly plug it instead of me shamelessly plugging it because I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but how did this idea come about? Did, did they just contact you and say, hey, we want to do a documentary on uh, your life, your your career, your music? Or how like how did this all come together? Because it's so weird that a documentary, not, not weird, because I think you're a great subject to have a documentary on, but to say, sure, I'll have you follow me around for six months and film me and film my shows. It must be a little like, weird. Well, you know, there over the years, there's been lots of different versions of that type of um, filming that's happened. Uh, they were filming on the Buck Cherry tour, for example. And um, even before that, I remember Much Music had a show called Coast to Coast, uh, where we had one of their videographers come on our tour bus for a week uh, when we were playing with Billy Idol and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, and even when I was um, uh, getting married, there was a, uh, a reality film crew doing what was called Biff Naked Bride. So, I mean, it's not, for me, it's like, I guess it's just kind of a work thing, but at the same time, this this is really, really special um, because we have never really agreed to any other offers before to do a documentary. So it's very exciting. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I think if I'm not mistaken, it comes out in 2023 or it starts filming in 2023. Do you know? We've already started filming. We started oh. last year. 
Oh, okay. And uh, it will be coming out later next year, if I'm not mistaken. Do you know From the your mouth to God's ears? I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, hopefully, I, I think so. There you go. Um, Biff, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been a highlight of a week that was going so south for me. So thank you so much for sticking with me for a half hour and chatting about your career and your upcoming show here on the 11th at the Rec Center in Calgary. Of course. It's been such a pleasure. So with that, I want to remind everyone that the links to uh, Biff's uh, website, uh, social media pages, and to buy tickets for the event here in Calgary are in the show notes. Heck, I'll even put the show uh, the tickets to buy them for the Regina to stop as well in there. So if you want, if you're listening to this in Regina or in Calgary, please purchase your tickets and get out and show support for Biff Naked because Yay. she is one hell of a singer and one hell of an artist. So with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in for another great great episode of the cross border interviews have yourself an excellent day and remember get out from behind social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody it makes our society better talk to you later everyone